Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL host hobby vlog with GBHL James. You've not had one of these for a little while guys, but there's been many reasons for that. It's been Christmas, it's been New Year, and not a lot of hobbying has been going on. And of course we've been focusing quite a lot with Hotgates Gaming and trying to get the battle reports all ready for that. And uh, what you can actually see in front of you is some of the terrain that Top Table Wargaming Stephen Crow left here from a battle report that we put up the other day. If you're not already going to check that out, do go and check that out. But that's not what this video is about. Now, today we are going to be taking you around a town and around this town are various bits of hobbying which I have managed to do over the last uh, month or so over the holiday season as we call it and around the town there are different gaming system uh, models which I decided that while I was at my in-laws I might as well put together and prime and basically do some of the basic things that you can do without having too much uh, too much concentration so this is of course a strategy battle gaming channel and uh, therefore I think there is no better place to start than Bayonne and Galadriel Street down here. Um, so as you can see, we've got the bear in the middle, and then we've also got uh, Bayon the uh, the man model there. Now I do actually have the other version, the one that's a little bit more action orientated, where he's got the axe lifted up, and I started to paint that maybe probably when it first came out, to be honest. Um, however, I wasn't hugely hugely impressed with the the finish that I was uh, that I was getting on him I think at the time I didn't realize that you had to shake up your inks and if you didn't shake your inks up you could end up with a bit of a shiny finish um, but I I must admit I do love the pose here it reminds me very much of some of the uh, artwork that you see from uh, a lot of the old uh, Hobbit illustrated books and the like when uh, when they talk about Bayon resting on his big great axe um, and and yeah I was really I've been really keen to put these together for such a long period of time but one of the reasons or one of the things that put me off putting together Bayon was that I've never worked with green stuff before um, so before I went up to the in-laws I did actually pick some up um, so that I could work with it for the first time and I have to say if you've not worked with green stuff before it does take you completely by surprise it dries so so quickly so you get a little bit in your fingers and uh, and the moment you start putting the yellow and the blue together and it starts going green you've not got a lot of time to work with it really um, so I have to say I found that quite a steep learning curve um, but I did manage to plug a lot of the gaps in this bit there are quite a lot of gaps when I was putting them together um, and hopefully you can't see too much where the green stuff went and you certainly won't be able to I don't think when um, once I've uh, painted him in full. I probably do have to go over all of these miniatures with another sort of light going over of the priming brown uh, just because I haven't managed to get everything. I clearly wasn't using the very best of lights when I was putting them together. But I am looking forward to finishing Bayon um, because I, I do want to use him in some battle reports and some fun battles going forwards in the future. Uh, I also, on the other end of the scale, um, got together this Galadriel model. Now she is from the Hobbit White Council and probably my favourite Galadriel pose I have to say. There's one Galadriel I think which matches it in terms of awesomeness and that's not a Games Workshop Galadriel, it's the Galadriel from Night Models um, but I do love this version and I've been looking forward to painting her for a very long time. Very intricate detail, very small model um, if we just, I know that Bayon is meant to be bigger, a lot bigger anyway, but if you put the two together they look like they're from different gaming systems there. Uh, it's kind of cool that they're, that they're not. Um, um, so, although I don't have any plans for any forces that particularly include Galadriel, a uh, new or old version, not not in particular, I have been pretty keen to uh, to get some paint on her. I think that she's going to be a wonderful joy to paint. Um, so yeah, those were the start of my uh, my Hobbit models that I uh, primed and put together over Christmas. There are some more though, of course, so if we go to the next street. One thing that I have been very, very keen to do for a long time is to put together a Gondor and Fiefdom's army. Uh, now, it took me a little while to get hold of this guy. It's quite rare, of course, uh, but that is Forlong. Now, I am looking for another Forlong, the fact, mainly because I want to put together um, a conversion so I can have him mounted. He's very, very cheap for what he brings to the table. Uh, only fight four, so not fantastic in that regard, um, but he does bring three mites. Uh, I think it's three mites, and he also brings a good amount of wounds, and he's strength five, which is pretty incredible. So get him on a horse, uh, he's he's quite good. I think he's got, has he got three attacks, three mites. I'm not too sure off the top of my head, but uh, but I know that he's very good for 60 points. Uh, and behind him, I have the Axemen of Lossenark. Now, I can remember um, I, I had some wonderful theories about what you could do with these guys um, when special strikes were still relatively new and being discussed. Um, of course, we know now that they do have to go two-handed to piercing strike, which isn't as fantastic, um, 
But at nine points, fight four model, fight four in a, in a, in a Gondor force is pretty key really, I would say. Um, they are only defence five which with the amount of elven shooting and good armies that are floating around isn't particularly fantastic, although those themselves do tend to be defence 5. Um, but it does give you a little bit of hitting power uh, in an area, which, which is probably an area that, that Gondor Force lacks um, and relies very much on bringing its bigger heroes, if of course you can afford to get them in. But I am looking forward to getting some paint on them, and I don't think that they'll take too long once I do. Of course, a lot of chain mail, not a huge amount of cloth, pretty much chain mail and, and skin to be perfectly honest. Um, so once I get the bit between the teeth and decide to push ahead and proceed with these guys, I can imagine that you'll see them on a uh, on a either a GBHL battle report or on a Hotgates Gaming Battle Report at some point in the near future. Um, and next up, I've also got this guy. Now, I've always wanted to take him. It's Prince Imrahil. He's a bit of a beast. Not just necessarily uh, as being part of maybe like a Pelennor-themed uh, army, getting him involved in that way, or maybe having him come across and lead things like the Axemen of Lossenark or uh, Knights of Doamroth, which I also have to put together um, just as a bit of a shock force. Um, but even with the idea of having him in an all-hero, now, yes, you're not getting the benefit of having the uh, the banner, uh, which is obviously really, really good for Doamoth. You know, you're kind of paying points for that and not really using it. But he is a defense 7, fight 6 hero with threes in all the right places, an armored horse, and can take a lance. You're onto a win there. You're onto a win. And I, think, I, I do like the idea of, although a Kingdoms of Men all-hero army isn't going to be as good or as optimised as some of the all-hero armies that you can put together using a lot of the elven heroes. Um, I do like the idea of Imrahil, Aragorn and Eomer, Knight of the Pelennor, uh, as they would be on uh, at the Battle of the uh, of Pelennor. Uh, it's not going to be as great, but they are all pretty solid heroes, and I'm a Kingdoms of Men player. That's, that's my main love, as it were, uh, and that's why I really want to put together fiefdoms and uh, and Gondor army to go alongside my Rohan army, which I will be repainting this year, so you will get to see a, a series of hobby vlogs regarding that. Um, I will need to repaint all of my uh, Royal Guard. I will have to repaint... Um, not my son's avail, uh, but I am painting Knight of the Pelennor, so he'll be coming soon. Um, and I've, I've delayed doing him because when I glued him together, he had a big gap. But now that I'm using green stuff, <laughs> then um, then I can finally plug that gap and uh, and get him painted up to a good standard. Now I'm really looking forward to painting Imrahil. As you can see here, I've actually had to use one of the lances from the um, from the plastic. Knights of Doamoth set, and one of the reasons for that is, unfortunately, when I bought him from JT Noble, this guy didn't have his lance arm in there. We unboxed this on the channel. It was uh, it was an unboxing which went horrendously wrong, if anybody remembers it, because uh, Bilbo Baggins, my wonderful dog, um, decided that he would uh, he would try and steal the show. Um, um, but we didn't notice, but his arm was missing when we unboxed it. Um, but JT made a, a very valid suggestion, which was, look, you know, uh, he, di he didn't have anything back there. He could either contact Games Workshop to get uh, another arm or another um, Imrahil uh, sent out to me, or I could use one of the plastic ones. And to be fair, I thought I'd do that. Now, it does mean that I'm going to have to use a little bit of green stuff underneath, um, but I actually think that the way that the arm goes on, I'm just going to put a bit of green stuff there just so it doesn't look like you've got the hollow gap. I don't know if you guys can see that. But I actually love the angle and the way, if you look from the front, it doesn't look like that's an unnatural position for his shoulder to be in. It actually looks almost a little bit more organic because he's kind of pointing out and, uh, and going for the kill there. So I'm looking forward to getting him primed up and painted, but a little bit of green stuff on him before I do that. Uh, so sticking with Hobbit SBG back here, we have some of the plans for my Gondor army. Uh, now I do need to, I don't I don't think I have a Denethor, I need to get hold of a Denethor. I do have a Pippin, um, you know, so I want to be able to use that, that's good. Um, so I've just, I think I've just been bitten on the bum by a mosquito. Get away from me, horrible thing. Ooh. That hurts. Um, so yeah, I've got Fountain Court Guard there, um, and then I've also got some Warriors of Minas Tirith in the front. Now, I've always loved the uh, plastic Warriors of Minas Tirith, yet they are a little bit small, it seems, um, at times compared to some other minis. Um, but again, now that these guys are primed up, I don't think they're going to take too long to paint. I really like the idea of, you know, you've got that Defence 6 front line. Yeah, the Fight 3, it's not fantastic, but it's a Defence 6 line, which is probably going to be fainting all the time. You can support that with some decent Fight 4, which Gondor do have. You don't have to spam 
uh, the likes of Fountain Court Guard and Citadel Guard, but they've got a nice balance there. So you can still take your mainstay of troops, your Warriors of Minas Tirith, um, but then just back them up with Rangers uh, in the warband that you're taking Damrod. Of course, we've got Damrod down here. Um, take Fountain Court in the warband that you are taking Denethor. Take Citadel Guard with the long bows in the uh, warband which you are taking Berragond for example. Uh, I do have a Berragond upstairs, again I want another Berragond so I can do a mounted conversion so if everybody wants to send me one of those for free that would be great. But I really like the idea, I think you can get quite a lot of defence 6 and above in a, uh, even in a small Gondor force, in Gondor at small points level could can be a pretty um, intimidating thing to take on in terms of number of troops that you can get in there um, and defence 6 but you know these things are theory hammer we've not seen them really work particularly well in the past but maybe that's something that I can make happen this year and again hopefully something which will come to a battle report to you soon you can see a few more of the swordsmen here I probably need another 6 swordsmen I, I seem to have a lot of bowmen and a lot of uh, a lot of guys with spears but I probably need another 6 Minas Tirith um, Minas Tirith warriors just with sword and shield to be honest so I don't know whether I'll do converting or or again that's something that I'll look to trade or get hold of in the future um, but again some of them will be backed up by rangers so I will have to repaint some of my grey company rangers I think um, Oh no, actually, I do have Faramir's Rangers. Lots of guys have sent me some Faramir's Rangers, so I've got my six of those, so those just need to be stripped and painted up, I think. Um, so, And also I need to get hold of some Citadel Guard. So that is the uh, the fledgling Gondor army. Uh, and that's it really for the uh, the Hobbit strategy battle gaming uh, stuff that I managed to get on with over the uh, the winter period, the holiday season. Apart from this guy, uh, I've been waiting for him for a while. Managed to get hold of him at last. It cost me a little bit. It is, of course, the Rohan Captain with Axe. Um, he's not alongside all of that over there because I've, I've actually popped him up there with my Saga Warband, which I'll point out in a second. Um, but I love this model and I've wanted it for a very, very long time. Finally managed to get hold of it. Pretty chuffed and I'm looking forward to getting some paint on him. Rohan Captains aren't great. Probably don't make it into any competitive force. Um, but I do have some ideas for some narrative campaigns which I want to do in the future, of which uh, this guy will probably pay, pay a, uh, a key role. Okay, so uh, I did just point out down on this street, if we go down past some of the terrain, that this is my four point saga warband. These are the Anglo Danes. It can be Anglo Saxons as well, but um, I think it's Anglo Danes I'm going to be playing. Now, you guys have heard me mention and talk about these for a long, 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 long time. Uh, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's a bit of a wizard when it comes to painting things incredibly quickly and his Vikings have been waiting for my Anglo Danes to show up for such a long period of time uh, but part of the reason why they hadn't is because all of the guys that I got I think it was Wargaming Foundry and we got them from Selwick had uh, their feet together on a little stand as you can see in between in the middle of that and so why I I started off doing was actually clipping off that and pinning the feet and putting them underneath. You can see on this guy, uh, now that I've got some green stuff, all I did was actually glued him to the base and then I created a green stuff kind of elevation um, to cover over it so I didn't have all these little mounds in. Um, but if you look at some of the others, I have painstakingly pinned the feet of each of them, which was a real pain. Um, now my Saga Warband, oh, knocking over houses. My Saga Warband consists of uh, four Huskars with Dane Axes. I've got two Warbands of, uh, of just Warriors back there. Now some of these are um, a little bit more Northern, almost slightly Viking-esque. The idea is that uh, they, they'll have come down from Northumbria um, and, uh, and East Anglia and the like. And that's going to be reflected on the shields. You can see I've not painted any of the shields yet. I'm actually going to paint all of the shields separately. I think it would be a good idea. Um, so I'm going to paint all these guys. It shouldn't be too much work. Um, again, once they're all primed, uh, there's a lot of uh, dry brushing of chainmail and there's not a huge amount of cloth um, I do want to get a little bit of uniformity but not too much not too much uh, I did with these guys because they were well, I, I've used them as dismounts for the Sons of Ale so I wanted them to match that and I like the idea that the elites maybe have a little bit more of a, um, a consistent paint scheme these guys aren't finished um, you know they still need some of their reds highlighting um, his cloak is nearly finished, I would say. Um, but none of the browns are being done on them at all. Um, need the beards highlighting, finishing off. I think even the skin isn't fully highlighted. You can see there. 
uh, but it's mainly the browns that need to be done on them, the axe shafts and the like. Uh, one model, that, or well, three models really that I'm really looking forward to painting up are these guys down here. This is Harold Godwinson and, uh, and his two brothers. A um, little pop quiz very quickly, can you name the two brothers? Do it in the comment section below, don't cheat. Um, so there we go, Th those are those three. I'm really looking forward to using them. Um, apparently using named uh, named heroes and warlords in Saga isn't the best idea, particularly when you're only doing a four point war band. Most people recommend uh, that if you are going to bring them in, that you bring them in at six points. But I, you know, <laughs> this isn't a game that we're looking to do competitive necessarily. It's one that we're looking to do for fun and narrative purposes. So, um, so yeah, I have included him in there. Um, one of the cool things that he does allows you to bring an extra Saga dice to your dice pool effectively, so you're getting an extra one there. But it's also the fact that um, his two brothers effectively are counting as extra wounds and extra attacks when he does manage to charge in there. A very defensive force, the Anglo Danes. I well, very much on trying to stack up um, fatigue on your opponents, and then um, you know you stack up the fatigue, and then you run in and you try and crush them once you've done that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to getting these done. That's probably something I'm going to work on today, and maybe come back later on if I can. Um, I just want to get some black paint on all of them, and then just go over anything that I think just needs another layer. That includes Bayon. Uh, over here and the like um, but as soon as I've got black paint on all of them I'm probably going to go over and start dry brushing some silver um, getting them ready to be done and coming to some battle reports near you soon so there's some Hobbit strategy battle gaming stuff that we've done some Saga stuff that we've done but then up here in the tower ha! Oh, it's Batman! some of you will have seen GBHL Jamie put some, um, some of his Batman minis um, up on the Facebook page for the GBHL podcast. Uh, I've been looking forward to painting him for ages. When when we saw the Batman minis, we were really impressed. I love Batman. So I think Batman's cool. Um, but the thing that put us off was the how complicated the rule set seemed to be. It didn't seem to be um, particularly clear. Now, there are a couple of people in Stockport who do play Batman and know it reasonably well. And I had heard that you can effectively tank up Batman to be a bit of a one-man army. And anything where you can just buy one miniature and play a game, well, winner, winner. Um, so I'm hoping that I'll be shown how to play that at some point soon. Uh, he probably needs another coat of uh, black primer, I would say. Not all the paint has uh, gone to him particularly well, but he is there. Something which I have done with him, if I pick him out. And something which I now kind of maybe wish I'd have done with some of my Saga minis. I don't know if you can see there, um, you can definitely see green stuff. But I green stuff around the base, around the base, and then I carved in the brickwork. Now, that was much, much easier to do than if I bring one of my Saga miniatures. That was much easier to achieve. Obviously, I wanted a smaller bit there than the cobblestones that I did here where I used um, wall filler. Um, just some... Um, wall filler which I put down, let it dry and then scraped into it, although I do still kind of like the effects of, of that, it's less shiny, uh, it looks a little bit more genuine I think than the um, than that at the moment, but who knows, let's, let's see how that actually turns out once I get some paint on him. Uh, and then finally, something which I also managed to do was to glue together some of my uh, alchemists uh, and also Meat Hook over there. For anybody who's been following Abattoir Away Days, which is my Guild Ball Match Report series over on Hot Gates Gaming, uh, then you'll see that many people who do play the Butchers have been asking me, well, where's Meat Hook? Why are you not putting Meat Hook in there? She doesn't get any love. Of course, that's because she's uh, she's quite influenced greedy without contributing too much to the team. She's only got one each melee and the like. Um, but I have bought her. I've still got her one of her arms to, to glue on. That's her over on that right-hand side. Um, before I've got to glue one of her arms on before I can uh, I can prime her up. But I was finding that quite difficult. Um, her contact points are pretty useless, I have to say. Uh, but over here, we have the Alchemist. Now, I'm hoping to use the Alchemist for Series 2 um, of my Guild Ball Match reports on Hot Gates Gaming. Um, I've not got them all uh, glued together there. I believe upstairs I've still got Mercury. Uh, who have I got? I've got Mercury up there and... Catalyst. And is that it? I think that's it, maybe, possibly. I think so. Um, so I think that's it for my for my alchemists. Um, so once they're together, I want to get. I need to get some paint on them uh, ready, just in case the global community get behind my uh, my Patreon 
and uh, want to see some more Guild Ball match reports. And that's a good point, actually, guys. If you're enjoying um, having the extra match report content or the uh, the level of match report content that I've been trying to produce over on Hotgates Gaming, then make sure you do click in the links in the video description below and check out the Hotgates Gaming Patreon. Uh, because that is what supports the content that I produce personally and of course any support that you're giving me is making it much much easier to find the time to uh, to make more content for you guys which is ultimately what I want to do so there we go that's our table of what we've achieved so far I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring put away some Christmas stuff now and uh, and then hopefully be able to crack on with some of my saga miniatures and maybe just maybe we'll come back in with a video later showing you the progress of those so today I've just been trying to chill out a little bit and um, and yeah, just finish off priming or trying to finish off priming uh, the rest of these guys. I have to say it's been a little bit hard getting in um, into some of the uh, the chainmail bits. I don't spray when I um, when I prime anymore. Um, however, I have noticed now that I brought these down into the light that uh, I haven't quite got into all of the nooks and crannies. In, uh, in some of the chain man like which is a little bit disappointing I have to say a little bit disappointing but it shouldn't be too much uh, too much work to get those up to scratch and the wonderful thing about that is that uh, the next step we're going to get some chain mail on them and start bringing them to life start doing some of the metal work um, and really that means that these guys won't be a million miles away from being done but someone that I have made quite a bit of progress on is this guy this didn't take too long um, but this is Bayon the Bear um, so I uh, I obviously had him black um, but what I did do is I took some let's call Tau Light Ochre and I mixed that together with black to create the colour for dry brushing which was an, a bit of a tip given by uh, Shadow of Shadow and Flame he said uh, use Vomit Brown I believe that Tau Light Ochre is Vomit Brown uh, so I've used that to to dry brush this model, and I have to say I do like the uh, the, the kind of finished result on the skin. Uh, what I will probably do is go back over him with some black ink, um, and then go over it again one more time with the towel light ochre, probably. Um, and I've also just done the first bits of uh, of colour on his teeth and gums and tongue and eyes uh, they will of course need to be inked the uh, the teeth and tongue and then highlighted up of course and then it'll be down to his base which should be pretty cool um, but that probably brings me to the end of, uh, of my hobby blog so don't forget to comment like share and subscribe support your hobbit hobby and support your hobbit hosts if you want to support me in particular make sure that you get yourself onto hot gates gaming youtube channel to watch battle reports and of course you can support the other guys by checking out jamie's patreon and also sbg magazine make sure you ask those guys how to buy it also guys make sure that you like our facebook and that you follow us on twitter that you support your hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle gaming